Hi everybody, it's Justin Kennington with SDVOE Alliance, and today I'm joined by my old friend, Bob Michaels, well, my young friend, but he's old to me. I've known him a long time. <laughs> Bob Michaels, CEO of ZV. Bob, hey, thank you for Justin. joining us. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank Thanks. you for tolerating that introduction. No, no problem, no problem. <laughs> So, uh, as, as we sit here in, in Europe, as it happens... Finally. Uh, I, yeah, right? How long has it been? Um, I've never been to Barcelona before. Okay. But I haven't been to Europe in two and a half years. Same? Uh, well, no, not the same. You've but, been, uh, well, you've been into Europe quite a lot, and that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. ZV has been uh, expanding your operation in, in Europe in a, in a very serious way. Why don't you tell us what's going on there? Yeah, we, uh, we've been in the European theater for uh, about seven years uh, now. Actually, ever since the beginning of the launch of our first so-called SDVOE product uh, back in 2015. <clears throat> we've been focused in the UK, <clears throat> selling uh, through distribution in several parts of, of Europe. And uh, two years ago, activity started to really brew in the dock area. And uh, we went if you want to call it semi-direct about two years ago, we hired one person to head up activity, uh, conducted some market research, spent a lot of time with uh, potential integration partners over the past two years and throughout COVID year, mostly on Zoom and, uh, and team calls. And then in beginning of 2001, really took the bull by the horns in terms of going to market, uh, making arrangements with, uh, with integration partners, uh, signing agreements with integration partners and the and the business started to grow rapidly and so we we found the need to have a base of operations in Europe not just in the UK but in Europe now because of the change in status of the UK and uh, established our first subsidiary company ultimately in uh, in Augsburg back in November everything became legal and official uh, with a warehouse and an office and customer support facilities uh, and everything you start to need to really further develop uh, the the region for us and and I, I would say in as much as we have a range of products I mean we're, we're fully vested in video distribution that's what we do right mm -hmm. it's all we do um, but the but the backbone of the effort has been focused on SDVOE technology, right? So the acceptance of 4K. That's your Zyper product line. <laughs> it's our, our Zyper product range. And early on in this effort, our focus was, you know, there's always an effort to sell because we need to generate revenue, obviously, so does everybody else. But our strong effort had been on, on training and education. Yeah. And we spent, you know, a good year and a half, more than a year and a half, just in the area of training and making sure that people understood what the technology consists of, especially on the SDBOE side, uncompressed, all the capabilities of the technology, all the applications that it could address, and, and, and moving away from this argument of one gig versus 10 gig, which, you know, honestly, that was never the argument and it never should have been the argument. Right. Right, it was always, do you need compression? Or, do you, or, or should it be uncompressed? And what's the application? And that drives the requirement, right? So we focused on that, on what the application was, finding the best solution. And I would say 85% of the cases, the proper solution was uncompressed video, yeah. right? And customers, honestly, they, many of them didn't even realize this, that they needed uncompressed, right? Because they've been brainwashed, okay, by, if you want to say, by Crestron and this whole argument, which was, you know, not reality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of video transport and uncompressed quality and all that, what, what I've noticed, at least from looking from the outside in and, and talking to your team, is that, is that ZV does a careful job of not only talking about the Zyper product line as a transport, but also really focusing on some of the other capabilities, the processing, the video walls, the multi-view. How, how does that go for you as a, as a sales strategy, as a value proposition? I, a lot of the focus has been on the, if you want to call it extracurricular capabilities that people don't necessarily expect, all right? Yeah. I mean, let's face it, the industry is used to, to incorporating uh, uh, video wall technology into a solution. Right, and they're used to buying additional boxes and equipment 
to process multi-views. Yeah, it, be <coughs> it becomes an add-on that you need to think about and design in and pay for for each individual Everywhere screen. Everywhere you want it. Yep. Okay, so I need it here, I need it here, I need it here, but I don't need it there. Do I really need it here? Am I going to need it here? Right? So, you know, trying to find out where I'm going to need all these extra processors and trying to fit that into a budget becomes cumbersome, right? This is standard fare for us. Right. All right? You get it. It's all part of our, our solution. Right? And, and so the video wall capability is something that many people move to because there's, you know, in every lobby, not every lobby, but there's four screens. Okay? And you want yep. to be able to wrap around all four or four individually. But the multi-view is really something that has grabbed the attention of a, of a larger audience than we would have expected. Right? There's many people who didn't think that they would use it. Okay, uh, historically command and control, historically sure. in a, in a ho hospital operating theater. Okay, I mean, it's kind of dictated in those places, right? But <clears throat> in a lobby, maybe not. On an individual screen, potentially not. But people well, have definitely not because it's eight grand uh, for the box to add well, on yes, for this one screen. That's yeah, part of it, <laughs> <clears throat> you know. But um, and the number of, of multi views. So it's not just being able to give somebody a template of say a two by two. Yes. All right. Uh, it's giving the the customer the ability to create really any template that they want with 19 images being able to be put onto a screen. Uh, the, 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 the level of flexibility that you have is greater than anybody has ever seen. Right? Yeah, it, it requires a, a sort of a change in mindset of the designer to be able to take advantage of it. Instead of thinking, well, you know, I'll put multi-view here and there because it's so expensive. Think, what would I do if I could put multi-view anywhere? Yes, and, and, a, and, a, and a great example that, that we see is at the Westgate Hotel in Las Vegas where last year they installed the the sport book which is the largest sport book in oh, the right, world right. Uh, supposedly i don't know that but but they say that and they created this huge video wall right and at the same time imagine this 175 different multi-view templates wow. 175 and and you know it's mind-boggling when you think okay how many do i actually need how many sporting events will there be if i put them up here but 175, they, have a, they had a need from day one for 175. Right. So what has that morphed into today? Because the installation is about a year and a half old, right? So that was thinking out of the box. And can you imagine the amount of money they would have spent on video, pro on, on, on multi-view sure. processors sure. in there? Um, let's, well, I guess, first of all, uh, I was just trying to book my Las Vegas hotel for Infocom and I, I couldn't get the Westgate. Maybe you know no, somebody there forget and you that. can, no, just... okay, well, I guess I'll be taking the monorail. <laughs> Um, let's bring it back to, to Europe for a minute. A thing, a thing that occurs to me that I've read and, and, and as I follow industry trends, it seems like Europe is behind other markets like, like America, uh, like APAC, in adoption of AV over IP. Not by a lot, but, but by a little. And I, I don't know what's the chicken and the egg here. I'm wondering how you see it. it, it as, as ZV moves into Germany, are you, are you betting on bigger growth coming sort of organically from Germany? Or are you moving in there because you see the opportunity to drive that growth? It's, it's, it's a combination of both. And, you know, go back to what I was saying before about education. When you open people's eyes and you spend the time with them and you don't try to sell, but you try to educate, right? People become more generally more interested, right? They want to bring some knowledge into their own house, into their own integration firm, sure. and they want to get an edge over competition. Right? And as Steve Mesker, our CTO, says, the Ethernet loses to nothing. Okay? And you know, we can take all this technology that's been developed over many, many years, billions of dollars have invested, and we can bring it into our own products right, at minimal cost to us and, and provide this capability out to a widespread audience. And a lot of the problem has been that people have not been educated on this. Right? They're comfortable. Uh, with ha they have been comfortable with HD base T. It's been around a long time. It works. Mm -hmm. It's a solution, so it's easy to cut and paste. I know it's going to work. Is yeah. it ideal? I don't know, but it works. Right. And so, I'll put it in. I'll never get fired for putting That's in it. an HD base T. I won't, I won't get fired <laughs> for it. Right? Which is which is not a reason to do it. I mean, we we're supposed to be an industry that's at the forefront of technological change. Yeah. Right? There's a television everywhere or a monitor everywhere. Right? It's just finding the best equipment to, to do what you want to do with that. If you have an LED screen, you, you know, now people are starting to realize that 
if I have an LED screen, do I really want compression in there? Right? I mean, artifacts become visible. That's right. not what you want. You spend all this money on this LED screen, the image has to be perfect. you got a million dollar TV that's 50 meters wide. Right, okay. You, <laughs> image you, quality you starts to matter. That are, that are this large <laughs> on there. So I think the market is ripe for change. We're finding a great level of acceptance. Where we found the greatest acceptance from early on has been in the Nordics, okay. right? Uh, embraced right away seven years ago, started uh, purchasing product and installing yep. product. And we've and seen some of those a, case studies right? and big technical universities. Yeah. And, yep. it's, it's a large market for us. And, and in the dock, and uh, we found uh, some, some partnerships in, in, in Switzerland and in Austria as well that people were hesitant. People were even more than hesitant. They were resistant <clears throat> because they didn't understand. And, and support was critical, right? And, <clears throat> you know, I could go back to our a relationship that we have with uh, with Netgear, right? In terms of, of going to the customer directly and, and the support that we get from SDVOE on the technical front when, when there is a new requirement or there is an issue that no one has seen before, yeah. right? And it needs to be addressed. And the customers have seen that we together as teams have addressed these requirements like almost immediately, which again is almost unheard of, right? Yeah. Uh, we answered the phone when it, when, when a customer calls, physically, we answer the phone, right? We get right on it. We get great support from you, great support from Netgear. And so people have seen that, wow, this is not so difficult. We can make this work and we have a great support network behind us of these companies who are involved uh, together in the alliance or alone, whatever yeah. it might be. You're talking about uh, SDVOE and our members <clears throat> working together as a team, and I'm reflecting on a, a conversation I just had here earlier this morning about success in, in SDVOE and AV over IP on the customer side being driven best when the AV group and the IT group work together as a team. And I think that's, that, that, that's becoming a theme in, in my head for, for today. That, and of course, right, we're humans, we're people, this is how it works. If we can, if we can work together as a team, not not put up walls and not oh this is the AV oh this is the IT yeah. you don't break my stuff you know and and it, you know you've got partners in our alliance we the alliance are partnered with you that it's that team that makes us that makes us greater than what any one of us could do yeah there's no question about that and I believe that that another important point is that we as an industry <clears throat> over the past several years have come to learn how to deal with different folks in the industry, right? And especially on the IT side, yeah. right? Early on, did we really know how to communicate with the IT managers about this? I, no, right? It's they, easy, <laughs> just, just start dumping 900 megabits per second into their network, they'll, yeah, call, and, they'll call you. Uh, on, on your existing <laughs> network, it's no problem, right? We'll get to know them that way easily. But we, we've learned how to communicate and, and, and learn to understand the IT lingo, yes. if you want to put it that way, and, yeah. and learn about the obstacles that they face or the, and the needs that they have. And, and I think, as you point out, as, a, as an alliance, as a team, we've been able to address this, right? Because it's, it's all of us converging and, and, and meeting occasionally and talking about the issues that we've had and how we confronted them. Right, uh, and just communication with uh, with fellow members, whether it be founders uh, or or different members of the of the SDA, uh, SDBOE, it has helped tremendously. And and two, we we formulated our own strategies for approaching these customers in different regions. And 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 back to your question on on Germany and the DOC region, uh, we hired experience. Okay, because, yes. you know, who are we to say we know how to operate in, in, in this particular atmosphere? Right. We don't. Okay. As Americans, sometimes we think we do. All right. Uh, and maybe it's sometimes we do. Who wants over IP? Uh, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, we have it. So, <laughs> so we've done a What's good job there. Error? I wasn't joking. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> Great. Great. Um, the, the last item I wanted to touch on, and it's something that we're, we're working to highlight, is availability. And I'm very proud that, that so many of our members are not struggling with availability right now. Talk to me about, about ZB's position and, and about how the last few months have been for you as, as you watch others struggle with availability. Yeah, back in, uh, in 2000, the beginning of 2021, we took a deep dive into the marketplace with, uh, with many integration partners, people that we trusted, people that we have uh, long-term relationships with, 
to really try to ascertain what's going on. Yeah. Okay, I mean, 2020 was 2020. Nobody could get into buildings, okay? And we knew there would be pent-up demand. And our data indicated that this pent-up demand, there was going to be an opening point. We didn't know exactly when, but let's face it, integrators were short on cash. They yep. needed to get into buildings. They needed to get jobs. And we figured that as soon as they were told you can come and do this job, they told on Monday the customer wants them there on Tuesday, yeah. right? Not six months from now, okay? And get me in your schedule, please. No, come and do it today. And they needed to do it, right? And it wasn't driven just by customer satisfaction. It was driven by the need for yeah. cash, Yeah. okay? And so we made a decision back at the beginning of 2021 to build inventory, both in terms of finished goods and in terms of raw materials. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, it, it, it cost us significantly more than, than we were paying in the past yeah. because of supply chain issues or component shortages, whatever it might have been. But we built up significant inventory of the main selling products, and that included every SDVOE product that we have. And we have uh, 136 different SKUs of SDVOE-based products, right? The, the broadest range that there is by any, any other company. And, and so with this inventory, we have we were able to, and we continue to be able to deliver within anywhere from a week to say four or five weeks mm -hmm. on just about every product that we have, depending upon the quantity, sure. of course, right? Uh, and depending upon the options that are required and, and et cetera, so on. But we can deliver within a very, very small window. And that has proven to be, to be a godsend for us, right, mm -hmm. in terms of where there's a need now, where other suppliers aren't able to supply for 40 or 50 weeks, and yet there's still this need for cash and to need to run a business and to keep your employees healthy. I can't imagine, I'm not, I'm not even a personally a good enough planner to deal with, with 52 week lead times, that's all that. I don't know what to do oh, with no, that. really, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'd give up. <laughs> I mean, we, we've had some component no, I'd issues. No, call that's what I'd now, do. Call us and then and, and we can deliver. But we've managed them well. I, I mean, we, we said as a company we're prepared to potentially pay a little bit extra for something on a component side or wherever it might be to get a quicker delivery so that we could keep stuff getting out the door. Right, that's great. Yeah. Well, thanks for the chat, Bob. Is there anything else we didn't cover that we should? No, I think we're pretty good. Uh, that SDV, uh, the show, ISE, it's been fabulous. Hasn't it? Yeah. I, I, attendance you know. has been great. I'm, I mean, excited. I'm excited to hear the official numbers, but it certainly feels like it We've feels done very like well. an ISE, doesn't it? it yeah. It, it feels like an old ISE. Yeah. And, and, and that's in, a, in a, a volume, a space that's so much larger than we've had before, which says to me, you know, this, if yeah. this place doesn't feel empty, there's a lot of people here. Oh, there are a lot of people here. So, yeah, and it's been fun. And we've still got another day and a half to go. And the crowds are, are the same as they were on Tuesday and Wednesday today. Yeah, you're today. right. You're right. I think it, 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 it speaks well for, for Infocom, right? Since as, so. since, as you know, COVID is over in the United States. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everybody will be That's there. True. And some states never had it, so. That, and I, I suspect that includes Nevada. Yeah, Florida, um. <laughs> Texas, all those states. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for for sitting down, Bob. Yeah, it's this was great a lot to of fun. Always chat. Yeah, good to see you, Justin. All right, everybody, check out ZV, ZV.com. Absolutely. And thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.